This session we will be doing an introduction course on autoencoders. Autoencoders are neural network models that learn to reconstruct input data, compressing it into a lower dimensional representation and then reconstructing it back, often used for tasks such as dimensionality reduction and anomaly detection. Autoencoders are a cool technology that can compress data in a special way. Unlike traditional methods, autoencoders are designed to learn from specific examples rather than following general rules. This means they become experts in compressing a particular type of data. For example, an autoencoder trained on pictures of faces would be great at compressing face pictures but not so good at compressing pictures of trees. When data gets compressed, there's usually a little bit of information lost in the process. Autoencoders are no exception. They use a clever technique called lossy compression, which means that when the data is decompressed, it might not look exactly the same as the original. Just like when you save a picture as a JPEG, it loses some quality compared to the original. But don't worry, autoencoders make sure that the most important parts of the data are still there. The best thing about autoencoders is that they learn automatically from examples. You don't need to tell them exactly what to do or how to compress the data. All you have to do is show them lots of examples of the data you want to compress, and they will figure out the best way to do it on their own. It's like having a smart student who learns from experience. To build an autoencoder, you need three things, an encoding function, a decoding function, and a way to measure how much information is lost during compression. The encoding function turns the data into a compressed form, and the decoding function brings it back to its original form. These functions are usually created using special mathematical tools called neural networks. They are like computer brains that can learn patterns and make decisions. So, even if you don't understand all the technical details, you can still use autoencoders to compress your data. Just remember that they're like clever students who learn from examples, and they can compress data in a way that might make it look a little different but still keeps the important parts intact. Have fun exploring the magic of data compression with autoencoders. The loss function you see here is a way to measure how well an autoencoder is doing its job. An autoencoder is a special kind of neural network that tries to learn how to compress and then reconstruct data. This loss function helps the autoencoder understand how close its reconstructed data is to the original data. Imagine you have a picture and you want to compress it using an autoencoder. The loss function calculates the difference between the original picture and the picture that the autoencoder reconstructed. It adds up the differences for all the pixels in the picture. The goal is to make this difference as small as possible. By minimizing the loss function, the autoencoder is learning to make the reconstructed picture look as close to the original picture as it can. In other words, it's trying to do the best job possible at compressing and then reconstructing the data. This loss function is important because it guides the autoencoder during its training. It tells the autoencoder how well it's doing and helps it adjust its weights and biases to improve its performance. The autoencoder keeps trying different combinations of weights and biases until it finds the best ones that minimize the difference between the original and reconstructed data. So, in simple terms, this loss function is like a teacher for the autoencoder. It tells the autoencoder how good its compression and reconstruction skills are and helps it become better at its job. In simple terms, the given code represents the creation and training of an autoencoder, which is a type of neural network used for data compression and reconstruction. The code starts by defining the input layer, which specifies the shape of the data that will be fed into the autoencoder. In this case, the input data has 29 features or variables. Next, the code defines the encoding and decoding layers. The encoding layer reduces the dimensionality of the input data and extracts important features, while the decoding layer reconstructs the original data from the encoded representation. The numbers 12 and 29 indicate the number of neurons in the encoding and decoding layers, respectively. The activation functions used in the encoding and decoding layers determine how the neurons process and transmit information. In this case, the tan activation function is used in the encoding layer, which helps capture nonlinear relationships in the data, 
and the sigmoid activation function is used in the decoding layer, which maps the reconstructed values between 0 and 1. The autoencoder is then created by specifying the input layer and the decoded output. It is like putting together the encoding and decoding layers to form a complete model. To train the autoencoder, the code compiles it by specifying the optimizer and the loss function. The optimizer, in this case, is Atom, which is a popular optimization algorithm that adjusts the weights and biases of the autoencoder during training. The loss function, mean underscore squared underscore error, measures the difference between the original input and the reconstructed output, with the goal of minimizing this difference. Finally, the autoencoder is trained using the fit function. The training data, x underscore train underscore normal, is provided twice, once is the input and once is the target output, as the autoencoder aims to reconstruct the same data it received. The number of epochs determines how many times the autoencoder will iterate over the training data, and the batch size specifies how many data samples are processed together before updating the model's parameters. The validation underscore data parameter is used to evaluate the model's performance on the training data during each epoch. In summary, the code sets up an autoencoder model, compiles it with appropriate settings, and trains it using the provided training data. The autoencoder's purpose is to compress and then reconstruct the input data, learning to capture important patterns and features along the way. You will be using this code in the lab session to design your own fraud detector.